Well, hello friends, it's Amy Ferlici at the Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio. And today I have this awesome, look at how cute, I love like the little crisscross on there, right? So this is obviously like a little Valentine treat box, but I have to show you, it was inspired by, and this this guy's seen a little like love and wear. This was a super cute, again, it has that little crisscross, a little treat box that my Aunt Connie made for me way back whenever all of this product was even available. So it's been a few years but I've held on to this cute little box like I said you can see it's seen a little bit better days but I loved this box there was something about that little crisscross that I just thought was so cute so I pulled this box apart and figured out how to make it I am sure she probably found it on somebody else's blog or YouTube channel at one point I don't know who that was so I apologize I'm not trying to take credit for anybody's super cute little treat box idea but I've kind of updated it with current products and we're going to show you how to make this today. So this is all, all the products to use on this little tree are part of, this is the From My Heart, actually, let me back up. So from our spring um, mini catalog, right? The From My Heart Suite, super duper cute suite of products for your Valentine or I Love You treat ideas. So you can see we are using some of that From My Heart designer series paper. We use the Heartfelt Bundle, which is that awesome stamp set and then the two heart punches. We are using that real red double stitch satin ribbon and then even some of the From My Heart faceted gems. So awesome suite of products. I'll flip over here just so you can see the stamp set up close because what I have found too, for example, we've got that one that says, so lucky to have a friend like you and love you lots. Even both of those are great for not just for Valentine's Day. So at first look, you might think, oh, it's just for Valentine's Day. But even the love comma, you can stamp that on anything, right? And the hearts are cute too. Um, so not just for Valentine's Day, I would say anytime, even a wedding, an anniversary card, this would be a great stamp set for those projects as well. And then actually one more thing will pop in here to see the heart punch pack. So there's a straight edge and then a scallop edge heart punch included in there. And we're going to use both of those. So you will see them all live and in action. So, okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to show you how to put the box together, first of all. So you start with, and I got to get my notes here, make sure I give you guys good information. You're going to start with a piece of, this is real red cardstock that measures five and a half by eight and a half inches. Okay, so that's the first step. So it's little, literally, you make this box out of a half a piece of real red cardstock. Okay, so then I'm going to grab my scoring plate and I want to make sure I'm in view here. So along, this is along the five and a half inch side. We are going to score it at one and a half inches and I'm pressing really hard, hopefully not too hard, and then also at four inches. Okay, so again along the five and a half inch side at one and a half and four inches. Okay, now we're going to flip it sideways and we are going to score along the eight and a half inch side at one and three quarter inches. And I don't know why I like to go back and forth over that again. Then at three and a half inches, at five inches, and one more at six and three quarter inches. Okay, so again, along the eight and a half inch side, we've got one and three quarter, three and a half, five, and six and three quarter inches. Then the other thing that we're gonna do is up in just this top corner down to this score line, we're gonna find our half inch mark and we're gonna score right there to half inch. And then I think rather than trying to figure out if I'm in the half inch lane, I have flipped it over. And because this is eight and a half inches, I am gonna score at the eight inch. So again, just down a half an inch there at the very end, down to that other score line. I don't wanna score all the way through here because I don't wanna line through that part. And I'll explain why we're doing that in just a sec. Okay, so we've got all of our score marks and let's see if I kind of zoom in here. There, you kind of get the idea. So you can see, oops, how I only scored up to that score line there and then same thing, scored only up to that score line on that side, okay? So now we're just gonna fold along all of our score lines. <clears throat> then I realized I forgot my glasses. I'm hoping I can do this without them. <laughs> It's hard, usually my head is right down here um, to see what I'm doing, but I can't because then you guys would see my head and not the project, and so I can't do that, right? Okay, so we've got our piece, uh, our box kind of scored and ready to go. Now we are going to, and I have to check my notes. I made a bunch of these last night so I would know what I was doing and still I'm like, okay. So we are gonna score, all right, along the 
uh, one and a half and four inch. Let me make sure. Isn't this awful? Like my notes are all scribbly, but yeah. Okay, there we go. So one and a half and four inch score marks up to this other score mark. Okay, and we're going to do that on both ends. We're going to cut here and here. All right, so let me show you. Right, I guess I've got another little template too. I should be looking at that. I'll show you what we're going to end up with. Okay, so we're going to cut up again along the one and a half and four inch score marks up to the crosswise score mark. Okay, we're going to do that on both ends. Okay, so again, along the one and a half inch score mark up to the intersecting, I guess, crossing score mark and then same thing right there. Okay, now with those little tabs, this is basically to help um, fold our box a little bit easier. So we're going to just cut this little bit off. So we don't want that one. And we don't want that one either. Okay. So we're going to trim those little guys off like that. Okay. Now we are going to cut, this is our center, our bottom piece right here. So we're going to cut up on both sides of that center kind of bottom piece of our box. Okay. And then we're going to do that on the other side as well. Okay. So everything is pretty much um, symmetrical from one side to the other. Okay. Here is our box so far. We are now, I'm going to show, I'm going to just pop this in so you guys can kind of see. We're going to cut at an angle from here to here and here to here on both sides. I've already put the DSP on this one, but this is what we're going to end up with is those cut marks. And then these, this is the bottom of our box. This will make more sense, I promise, once we start putting it together. Okay. But so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go from this angle up to, and I actually like to flip that in. It's a little bit easier. So find your score mark along here. And then we're going to cut up right there. Okay. And how did I do it? I think I flipped it inside, inside out. I kind of like working because I'm right-handed, like working on this angle coming up this way on both sides. Okay. So now same thing over here. We're going to flip this one in right here and find your score mark again, coming down. And then we're going to just cut at an angle. I like to use my big scissors because it's easier for me. Um, I don't get too many snips along the way. And then this one right here. There we go. Okay. So now you can see we have the same idea, right, as that one right there. So now next step is to add your designer series paper because it's a lot easier to put the designer series paper on now than it is once you've folded your box up. Okay, so I have these, this is four pieces of, this is some of the From My Heart Designer Series paper, the cute little, oops, I'll go that way, hearts on one side and then fun stripes on the other, okay? Now I did cut this, oh, I should tell you size too, okay? So it measures two and one quarter by one and a half. So if you can imagine if I line this up and it's not, right, this was a strip that was two and a quarter inches wide and then I just cut it at one and a half. So I need to kind of get this, ooh, actually, that is pretty well lined up, isn't it? There we go, is that gonna do it? Yeah, no, that looks weird, doesn't it? <laughs> I was having this problem last night too, trying to, um, cause I want things, there we go, there, there's my piece right there. So I want to adhere those on these two pieces and these two pieces, but I liked to have the stripes lined up. Some of them, it's not gonna matter. You're not gonna notice that so much, but these I felt like you really did need to make sure that you had them lined up properly. Okay, so these are gonna go on one side. So we're gonna flip these. We're gonna add our adhesive. I'm gonna do that again. Okay, so this one is gonna go right there and it just kind of fits it's about a um, quarter of an inch all the way around, a little border there. Okay, so you can see that one lined up, right? We're gonna pull it down. So it lines up very, very well, I think, right? Okay, so now same thing we are gonna do. These two right here, okay? Let's scoot that up out of the way. All right, and then we've got these little babies right here. So we're gonna do that one there and and that one right there, okay? So now we've got all of those. Now the next step is to fold our box together. So this is the idea. You're gonna put these two flaps up. These shorter ends are gonna go in first. So we're gonna fold, I kind of fold that back too. This goes up and then these things go in here and then kind of flip that back, same thing. 
these things come up and then the longer flap, you can see that's the longer one, will kind of hold everything together inside there, if you kind of can see that. Um, this is the short flap, you can, can you kind of see that? This one is shorter than this one, so I put this one in first, so when you, it doesn't get tucked down in there too far and kind of squinched up. That's why we kind of trimmed that half inch off there, okay? So that is the idea of our box, okay? And then you get those cool um, little crisscrossies. They'll look better, I promise, once we adhere everything. I'm gonna bring this other little guy back in because I wanna show you guys and make sure I do it right too. Uh, let's see, we're gonna flip it this way, okay. So we need to put some tear and tape on these four edges, okay? So, oops, flinging everything around. Okay, so we are gonna run some tear and tape along this little flap. And these are the ones that are folding in this way, okay? So we got tear and tape there and there. And I love working with this tear and tape. It's so easy to work with. I don't understand, honestly, how it's so sticky. It sticks so well, and yet I can tear right through it. I love it. It's like a mystery, but I love it. Okay, so we're gonna press firmly to make sure those are all good there. Okay, now again, we are gonna start with the smaller flap. I wanna put those in first. So we're gonna peel, oops. Ah, I've been working with that little bit on my hand too. Hopefully that's not distracting anybody. Okay, so we're gonna peel these little babies off here. Again, this I'm just gonna kind of fold back to get out of my way. And you want to make sure that that goes straight in there. You don't wanna press down too far. And it actually, this little flap, you guys see that? That little flap fits in there perfectly, but I still like to um, put it down on my table. I think it's easier to work with. So we're just gonna press firmly on both of those. And then same idea over on this side. And then these, because that's the longer flap, are gonna go all the way down into the bottom of the box. And I think kind of help hold it intact a little bit better too. If I can get the tear and tape pulled off. That's the only thing with this tear and tape. It just takes a sec. And I feel like I'm wiggling things. Sorry, guys, if it's a little bit wiggly there. Okay, so we're gonna just fold this up. I'm gonna get that back out of my way, and then that just goes straight down. Oops, I didn't, I didn't press on that one much at all, so it didn't stay in place, okay? So you can see that score mark is lined up right where I need to go. So if I'm holding it on the table, it's really easy to just flip that down. And then I'm just going to lay it down and press firmly. And then you can see that cool little crisscross. I don't know why I think that is so, just so stinking cute. Okay, so now we have our little half inch circle punch. And I'm just gonna I put, put that in all the way so you don't have to worry how far do you go. Just push it in all the way. And I'm gonna try to make sure it's, it's about even. This does not need to be perfect. No one will ever know. Those things fly all over the place and you pick them up later. And then that one right there, okay? All right, scoot those guys out of the way. Now, where's my little example? I gotta pull that back in so I don't forget anything, okay? Can you guys, if you see right there, right? You'll see what we're gonna make. Okay, so this is the basic box idea, right? We probably better put some candy in there now before I tie it up. So I figured I got some little um, Reese's and some Hershey Kisses, and about three of each of those fit in here just about perfectly. So it gives you a nice little snack inside there for somebody, okay? And the next thing I did, I, I put these together and kind of pinched and then kind of pushed down. I kind of wanted to have a little curve. If you can kind of see that, kind of a curve on either side there. All right, we are gonna grab the beautiful, can you guys see, it's gorgeous. I've been playing with this a lot. This whole suite of products, I, I think I posted on my uh, Facebook page, which I should tell you, if you're not already a member of the Gathering Ink with a K, Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio Facebook group, that's a whole mouthful, hop on over. There is a link in the details to this YouTube video. You can pop on over there and ask to join at any time. It's a public group, so you can even kind of lurk on there. If you don't want to become a member, that's fine too. But come hang out with me and see what we have going on. Um, we do Facebook Live videos every Friday. Um, I do giveaways and lots of fun stuff on there. So check it out. Okay, I'm kind of blabbering while I'm tying the bow because there's not a lot to tell you. You just have to tie a bow, basically. Okay. All right, we are gonna trim that little guy off. Okay, so we've got our bow, right? Next, what are we gonna do? Now we're gonna make our cute little tag here, the love you lots. So I have, this is just a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock. <coughs> I'm 
Of course, the tickle in my throat is gonna happen right now. Okay, I've got real red ink. We're gonna open this guy up and I have the fun little outline um, heart stamp. So nice, easy as always, tap, tap, tap. Press straight down and lift straight up. If you press really hard, you're gonna get ink in the middle here and it's gonna end up in the middle of there. You don't want that. So tap, tap, tap. I'm always telling my gals at class, tap, 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 not squish, 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 because then you get ink all over places. You do not need it. Okay, love you lots. And we're gonna stamp that. Okay, cute, cute, cute. So simple stamping, I'm all about that. Love that. You can have cute projects without doing lots of crazy, crazy details. If you love the crazy details, go for it. But these treats I actually made um, for bingo at the stamp studio. So I had to make a bunch of them. So I didn't have time to, you know, I couldn't spend all day doing lots and lots of detail. But like I said, you can make cute treats with simple details. This is, the, can you guys see? Because I love this. This is the little scallop edge <coughs> heart there also okay so now we are going to we're gonna dimensional all of this up hold on one sec <coughs> so if you watch my facebook lives i have to do that a lot too I had to grab a quick sip of water super dry here in michigan right now right so my throat always gets dry all right we're gonna just pop that right on there with our dimensionals and then I'm going to add one more uh, right about there because I'm going to attach. Actually, I'm not going to do that yet, though. But this, we're going to just attach. That's a lot heavier with the candy in it, too. We're going to attach that right about there. But we want to add a couple of these fun. These are the From My Heart Faceted Gems. And let me tell you guys, when I first saw these, I well, I barely have any left. Where are they? Let me find them. Here they are. So when I first saw these, I was like, oh, I don't know about these things because they don't have adhesive on the back of them. They come in this little thing, a ton of them. I've used so, so many of them. Um, and I was like, well, how am I going to get these to stick on here? But I've found the way. So this is all I have left, okay? Huh, very, very few. So I love this shimmery crystal effects is a glue also. If you guys did not know that. So I think it works really well. We're going to kind of actually, let's make sure. Trying to kind of, I don't want to, I want to like pound on the table, but I don't because then I think everything will shake. But I'm trying to make sure that my adhesive has come down. So we're going to squeeze. I don't want to get a huge glob, but I want to get a decent sized glob there. Okay. And I'll show you guys. All right. So this works so well too. Okay. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to zoom in opposite ways, right? Okay. So those are my little globs of shimmery crystal effects. Now I'm going to grab my take your pick tool and I want this red one. There we go. Okay. So I have to flip it over. Let's see there. I think I can do that. Okay. So I think it's easiest if you grab it with your take your pick tool and you just kind of, okay, now unstick. <laughs> That's the only hard part about the take your pick tool. Like you want it to like clamp on and then release when you're done. Okay. So just kind of put it on there. Don't touch it and play with it. Um, cause that was kind of my downfall before was too much like screwing around with it. So these are all on like upside down. I'm trying to get it to flip over. Okay, maybe if I put it in my hand. <laughs> this actually is a lot easier when you're not doing a video. I tell you what, guys. Okay. Oh, seriously. There. I think I need to cut off that little nub on my take your pick tool. It's, it's getting dried out. Okay. So just kind of leave those. Don't like touch them or play with them. I'm going to kind of scoot this stuff out of the way and then carefully okay normally I made these a bunch of them and then let them sit for a while that's probably what you want to do so I'm trying to be really careful and pop this on here without touching those little guys because they're probably not dry yet but there it is so can you see how fast and easy that was and like I said I there's just something about that cute little crisscrossy thing in there that I think is so cute I'm trying to like not roll around so the Reese's don't fall out. But what do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed that. So obviously you could make these for Valentine's Day. You could make them for like little birthday party favors. Just change up the colors, the paper, the ribbon, the sentiment to whatever. You need a cute little treat like this and you can put whatever you want. You could put something in a cute little cello bag and put it in there too. I kind of like the idea of just being able to sneak in there and grab a little candy, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this little guy today, this fun little treat idea. If you are 
are not already a subscriber to my YouTube channel, go down below, make sure you do that. Hit the subscribe button, like and share the video. I'd love to hear from you too. Comments are awesome. Um, and like I said, check out my blog and our Facebook group, the Gathering Ink with a K, Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio Facebook group. So my blog is gatheringinspiration.com and the Stamp Studio Facebook group. They're both great places to get lots of info. If you want to play bingo with me too, I just thought about that actually. So these were treats that I made for my live stamping bingo event here in my stamp studio, but I do an online bingo as well. And I'm thinking it's on February 20. 7th. It's a Thursday night. Details are on my blog if I'm giving you the wrong date. And if that date has already passed when you're watching the video, I'm sure there's another one that will be coming up soon. So let me know if you have any questions. I would love to hear from you. And thanks so much for watching today. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.